Hi everybody, welcome back to the second of a two-part episode where I've been building the uh, upper bridge on the Trumpeter 200 scale Bismarck. Uh, last time in the first part of this two-part episode I built the lower part of the upper bridge uh, and this time I'm going to finish that off by uh, putting together the foretop gallery, the range finders uh, and doing the painting and final assembly. There'll still be some equipment to fit at the end of the video, but we'll do that uh, in the next part. So we've got a lot to get through today, so we'll uh, get over to the bench and we'll make a start. Okay, so I'm starting off uh, where I left off last week uh, with this foretop gallery. And I've started to add the photo etch. Uh, these are the night signalling uh, devices here on both sides and I fitted one last week uh, to the underside of the searchlight platform. So we just have to fold these little rungs at the back through 90 degrees just so that they uh, lie along the bulkhead. So they're simple enough to fit. We've just got some more to do on these though. Uh, I've drilled out the holes here in the side for the uh, yards that we've got to fit. There are two turn brass yards which go along the side there like that and it really does make you appreciate when you see something like these ladder rungs going down this shield that this is almost the highest point in the ship and crew were expected to presumably climb over the splinter shield and down onto these rungs to attend to this gear and perhaps to go out onto that boom to sort out the antenna. So uh, you'd have to have nerves of steel I think to do that. Certainly I haven't got the head for heights uh, to do that. So now we'll uh, get these booms fitted. We want a nice strong fix in for these. This uh, platform sits on the back of the foretop gallery and it goes out towards the foremast. These go on the underside of the booms and they look like foot ropes. I'm not sure whether they were on a modern warship. They would obviously be there on a sailing vessel. Now I've made a kind of a goof here because I've actually drilled the holes a bit too deep for these yards and they've gone in a bit too far which means that these pieces don't actually fit because of the shortened length. So what I've done is just take a little piece out of the photo etch. Basically just cut a little bit off the end. So it goes actually into the underside of the platform. So it's not strictly accurate but I'd prefer the firm fixing in here for these yards. <clears throat> and once you look at the pieces underneath you don't really notice that they're going under the platform so I'd rather have it that way I think this is another uh, outrigger which goes on the front of the 
for top platform So uh, that's quite a tricky piece to get together and get it all lined up. The difficult thing with this is to get all three legs sort of equidistant if you like whilst keeping the mainstay straight ahead. Okay, I think that's uh, as good as I'm going to get it. The more you fiddle around with a part like that, which is so fine, eventually it's going to snap. So it's uh, sometimes best to just leave it when you've got it somewhere near. So these parts just go together like that. And it's uh, nicely detailed, nice and busy around the top of the bridge. So I'll move on to the conning tower now. Obviously it sits on top here. There's not too much to do with the conning tower itself. But I want to make the first of the director radars. Which sit on top of this structure. And we've also got one a little bit further down on the lower conning tower that we uh, built two or three weeks ago. So I'll do both of those. There's a third one to fit aft of the ship. But uh, as I'm concentrating on the bridge, I'll just do these two to start with. You've seen uh, these drilling templates before. They give us the correct spacing for the ladder rules. So you just have to zone out a little bit when you fit in these rungs. There are 26 on this pair of directors. It does take quite a while, probably half an hour to do the whole set. But I reckon they're an improvement on the moulded in detail in the trumpeter kit. Which is uh, quite indistinct really. <clears throat> Not at all like the effect that you get from these brass pieces. Next I'll build the arrays for these two uh, range finders. Uh, this is the first of them that I've already put together from the Pontos set. And in that there are four major pieces of brass and 14 little brackets that fit on the inside. So 18 pieces in all in one radar array. But uh, you can see how nice they look when they're finished. Uh, Trumpeter also provide these in the photo etch set in the kit. Uh, 
but uh, they're not quite as detailed as the Pontos ones. So uh, let's get the other one done. We have three of these to do all together. I'll build the two for the forward part of the ship. Uh, just to get them fitted onto these two units here. Those are the four main pieces that we need to be using. So we'll start off with this part. These uh, bends are on little tabs. So it's not continuous all the way along the bend line. And that makes it easier to bend the parts when it, the brass is so fine. So you can do this with your fingers really. This piece goes on the inside. The trickiest thing I found for them that first one was to get this piece here, which looks like a bed frame really. And the hard thing is to get it located perfectly centrally on the structure that we've just put together. So there's an awful lot of uh, trial and error before committing to any glue. There's more or less an equal overlap all the way around. And that's what you're trying to get. The hardest thing when trying to assemble this particular part is that this keeps on moving around. So to prevent that, I've just folded a piece of Tamiya masking tape over. And gently position the base on that. And that helps to locate the top piece a little bit easier without the bottom moving around. That's about as close as I'm going to get it. The next step is to fold the front of the array over. So this just folds down at the sides. And that just supports the front of the array here. Before we fit the front part to the main frame, we have to use 14 of these tiny brackets. It's very difficult to see where these go in the Pontos instructions. The drawing or the photograph is far too small. And even if you look online and download the instructions, which is a fairly high resolution, even then they're too small to see what's going on with this assembly. So this is when references such as the Anatomy of the Ship book comes in useful. Because we can see how this array is constructed in that book. When I built the first one I thought about omitting these because they are actually on the inside. But in the interest of building these Pontos sets 
as much as you can for the benefit of those of you that are building the set as well and perhaps struggling a little bit with it. I decided to do exactly what Pontos told us and fit them and actually you do need them because they just hold the front part away at the correct distance. You'll see a bit better on some close-up photographs that I'll put up on the screen in a moment when these are all in place. These pieces are about on the limit of my eyesight without any uh, magnification apart from my glasses. And as well as your eyesight, with these parts you can actually feel when the parts in the correct place it kind of clips onto the frame and you can detect that through the tweezers believe it or not you can see on the inset how I've got these little uh, braces 14 of them and what they do is they just keep the front of the array at the correct distance. So I've just given that assembly a squirt of CA accelerator just to make sure that all those little pieces are perfectly set, nice and firm and, and this rear frame actually drops inside the front part of the array. There we are, it's dropped down on the inside. And those brackets that we've just fitted, those 14 brackets, just hold it in the correct position. So they are important even though they're so fiddly. And then we just need to secure that with a minute spot of super glue just in the corners. Don't want to get too much on, otherwise it will block the delicate photo etch up. The surface place for these is on the actual director. These rangefinders were for the main and secondary guns on the ship. I fitted these uh, lamps on this rangefinder. They're from Pontos uh, Photo Etch and a couple of turn brass parts for the lights themselves. These are the last few bits and pieces on the conning tower.
the shooting you can hear I'm afraid is the poor rabbits well it's not the rabbit shooting it's someone shooting at the rabbits So I'm happy with those. The uh, pieces here on the front of the rangefinder arms, they're really tricky to get in the right place. The Pontos parts are very fine, the attachments are pretty minimal really, so, so they take quite a lot of fitting. But they're not in the trumpeter set at all. These are missing as are the parts at the back here. So overall that's quite an improvement I think. These are all the component parts of the upper bridge. And they've all had all the spray painting work done on them. Uh, there's a limit to how much spray painting you can do on these structures. And that's because of all the photo etch that's on them. And it's a bit of a dilemma really, uh, the extent to which you uh, add the photo etch before painting. On the one hand, adding the photo etch beforehand, I think is a stronger construction. But it then leaves difficulty with masking up because you've always uh, running the risk of pulling the photo etch off with the masking tape. But uh, the other way of doing it, which is to add the photo etch afterwards, uh, has its own problems because it's harder to keep the uh, glue hidden. And you run the risk of marring the paintwork, adding photo etch afterwards. So, so it's difficult to know which way to go, really. Generally, I judge when I've put enough photo etch on that I can safely mask around it uh, and stop at that point and then anything else that I've got to add such as these rails around the edge of this signalman's platform I'll add later on. So there's no hard and fast rule to it really you've just got to work out what you're comfortable with masking it's just really frustrating when you fit photo etch and then try to mask around it and removing the masking tape pulls it off. I like to get the photo etch on and leave it alone. You don't want to be reattaching it really. So anyway, I've been so I've been round, I've done the majority of the spray painting. And what I generally do is run around the bottom of the bulkheads just to touch up the black. And then some parts like the conning tower here need some elements picking out again in the pale grey so these so these devices on the top of the conning tower for example you just have to go back in over the dark grey uh, and pick it out in the light grey again also these railings around the back have picked out in the light grey so there's quite a lot of toing and froing involved with these sort of structures in terms of paintwork but eventually you'll get there this uh, device on top of the upper rangefinder is uh, a set of lights a pair of lights so 
So I'll reinstate the pale grey frame. When I do a fairly significant amount of brush painting, as I'm doing in this case, I like to just finish off the assembly with a light overspray of some matte varnish. Because what I find is that the brush application is a slightly different finish. Not a different colour, but a slightly different finish. It might be a little bit glossier than the spray applied paint. And what the varnish does is it just levels everything off. For lamps on uh, ships, I like to add a little bit of sparkling silver. This is a Tamiya lacquer paint. And I'll just add that to the face of the lamp. Then on top of that, some clear colour, in this case, green. And the uh, silver just shines through a little bit, makes it a little bit brighter. So uh, the last thing I need to do before assembling these is to fit the wooden decks. There are just two. Just making sure that all the tiny little cutouts are removed. Even something that size will probably obstruct the deck going down properly. So uh, just go around, make sure you don't get the bits underneath because obviously that will affect the uh, adhesion of the deck. Nearly missed one. I get asked fairly regularly when I'm putting decks down on videos whether or not I've had any problems with these Pontox decks lifting and I haven't. I built the hood uh, a year ago now and the decks on that show no signs of lifting at all or no bubbles appearing anywhere. And it's been suggested that you could use PVA adhesive on these decks but I'd be very sceptical of that. Personally, I wouldn't uh, try to use that. Uh, because, first of all, I've not had a problem, so I don't see the need to do it. But, secondly, I can't see how PVA long-term would form uh, a decent bond with plastic. I would imagine that it would form a skin over time and eventually just peel off so i personally think that that's a riskier strategy than uh, sticking with the pontos uh, adhesive 
I think that the adhesive in the Pontos sets is pressure sensitive. So maybe if you've had problems uh, with applying these decks and that they've lifted, maybe it's just a case that not enough pressure has been applied to activate the adhesive. But uh, I'm sticking to what Pontos give us. I've had no problems, as I say. The other question I've been asked is about these windows on the bridge. There are some lower down that I did a couple of weeks ago because I cut them out and glazed them on the hood. But I'm not going to do that in this particular case. And the reason for that is that they're quite deep. The mouldings are very deep. So if I applied acetate behind the bulkhead, the acetate would be quite a long way back. And I don't think that would look right. So what I do with these windows on this particular kit is I paint them with a gloss grey uh, to make sure that they're blacked out or greyed out. Then apply a blob of crystal clear over the top of that and that tends to fill the windows out a little bit. Sometimes acetate works but I think in this particular case as I said the moulding's too deep to accommodate that. This is a Humbrol enamel colour that I'm using for this. So uh, it's going to stay nice and glossy. Sometimes I think acrylics, gloss acrylics, end up going a bit dull. And the other thing is that this is going to have some crystal clear over the top as well so that will add to the shiny effect Okay, so this can go together now. And then the conning tower.
The second rangefinder that I made fits onto the lower conning tower, which is this one. You might notice that there's some bridge equipment missing here on this port side and that's because when I looked at them on the video last week I wasn't happy with them really. I noticed that the searchlight sights, the six of them, they're actually mismolded, at least in my example in the trumpeter kit. So I've been modifying them by cutting the uh, rangefinder sights off each one and replacing them with some brass tube. I've not finished that work yet so uh, I've yet to replace them. So we'll get all these platforms on and built up. And finally, our assembly from this week fits onto the upper mast deck. Okay, so that's as much as I'm going to be able to do this week. I was hoping to get some of the upper bridge equipment fitted uh, but I've run out of time I'm not going to be able to do that so that'll be for the next episode part 19 okay so uh, that's the bridge structure finished I've just got some equipment to fit to it in the next episode including a pair of quadruple flak mountings which I'll build in part 19 that will be coming up in two weeks time, I'm not around in the shed uh, for a few days so no Friday premiere next week but uh, I hope you'll be able to join me for that next one in a couple of weeks. In the meantime everybody look after yourselves, stay safe and I'll see you then. Bye for now.